Herzlich willkommen und welcome zum 37. DocFest München, die erste duale Festival-Ausgabe hier. Wir freuen uns, Sie sowohl online als auch on stage zu begrüßen und wo immer Sie uns auch zuschauen, herzlich willkommen. Mein Name ist Florian Schwarz, ich bin freier Moderator und Sprecher beim BR und äh, wir sprechen heute über den Film African Mood von Shamila Sidat. Der Teil unseres Programmes ist eine Produktion aus Südafrika und Finnland und wir zeigen Ihnen in der Reihe Doc Network Africa, African Encounters. And now I switch to English to welcome the director of African Mood, Jamila Sidat. Hi. Hello and hello everybody. I really appreciate you watching the film and I'd also like to thank you, Florian, and thank Doc Fest Munich for showcasing the film. You're welcome. It's a privilege to be here. Shamila, where do we reach you? Where are you located right now while we are talking? Kapstadt, South Africa. Great, excellent, wonderful destination. Um, and uh, it's a kind of uh, late... No, it's like this, the winter is coming slowly. The winter is certainly <laughs> coming, but it's still sunny days, I'm happy to report. Excellent. Just some information about our special series African Encounters this year for our audience. We present the documentary film series Generation Africa by South African nonprofit media company Steps to learn more about this fascinating continent. And your film is one of four um, that we show in the program. But before we talk about it, about your film African Mood, um, Shavila, how did you become a documentary filmmaker? Oh, that's going to take me back a long time. I actually must confess that I didn't start off as a documentary filmmaker. I studied and worked in law and particularly human rights law and advocacy work. But after uh, working in that for a long time, I felt that my true passion was around telling stories and I'd always loved consuming documentaries. Mm -hmm. So I thought, let me try and make documentaries with law themes. So I started to do that. And my first documentary, this is my second feature length documentary. And the first one was also around a law theme and it profiled South Africa's first female anti-corruption ombuds woman, Tuli Morancela, who actually ended up taking down South Africa's former president. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, so I came to, uh, to documentary through uh, the, the love of stories, but particularly with a focus on stories around people and people in the law field. So you could always combine these two professions and which is a wonderful combination because we have a good insight now, even if you're not a lawyer or you're not studying law um, in this film, African Mood. We have to first just explain the word Mood. Um, we have a German word. Um, it's called Schattenboxen. That means you, you fight against, but not really an, an, an opponent. Um, what is the word mood? Is it more than a competition or is it a, a discussion? Hmm. Interesting question. And, and, and you've raised some different meanings of moods, which there are there. But basically in the law world, mood is a simulated a court case. So it is a court case scenario and, a, and it gives people the conditions of a trial where you argue for the, uh, for the defense and for the, for the accused but you do it in, in situations that are not real, really real. So it's a practice session around a court case. And in this particular mood, it is, you can also use the word meet. So mm -hmm. it's a meeting place for people from across the continent who are actually competitors, but there's also another element that they get together and speak about um, things, common things that affect them and their societies and also the continent and the world that they live in. So, of course, you as a human rights lawyer knew around this. Have you take place yourself? Have you take part yourself uh, in early years, also in different moods? Well, I think this is one of the reasons why I wanted to make this film. So when I was a university law student many years ago, I was actually too um, intimidated to really take part in many mood competitions. So I took part in one minor mini level moot at my university. Mm -hmm. um, but I always admired the students around me who were so brave and tough and were willing to get up on the podium and argue their side with such confidence. And they also showed their vulnerability when they were up there. So after this experience of not directly participating in many moots, but really being fascinated by it, 
I started, when I started to work, I started to follow mood competitions. In this particular mood co uh, competition, the All Africa Human Rights Mood Competition, upon which the film is based, is a very special one. So I decided to make a film about that in later years. And it's really a kind of, a, if you allow me, a comparison to sports, because every minute in your film is kind of full of tension. It is this, um, this moment before the game, I would say. It's the moment before the students go to the trial and they train. They come from different universities around the whole country, around the whole continent. And the subject of this African mood was the right of refugees on the continent, quite a very complex uh, subject. How did you start to get the film together? Because it It starts in, I think, how many universities in whole Africa who can take part? I mean, the film is only about the finals then. <laughs> okay. No, it was, it was a massive task. And honestly, when I set out, I thought, this is a dream. Uh, let's see if it's a, it's a challenge. Let's see if we can pull it through. But I must say, so basically, just to give you some background around the competition, mm -hmm. there are universities all across the continent who take part in this competition. And before you even get to qualify the for the competition at your own universities, you have to beat other students mm -hmm. to be the team that represents the, this, the, the, the university to go to this competition. So this competition has started in 1992. It's the biggest pan-African pan gathering of law students, of academics, of human rights practitioners on the continent. And it's really turned into a, into a big tradition. So the, how we started off is... We got in touch with the Mood Organizers, which is at the Center for Human Rights at the University of Victoria, and they put us in touch with 60 universities across the continent. Mm -hmm. And through this process, I sat in Cape Town and got onto the phone, got students WhatsApp messages who were about to qualify and started chatting to them on the phone. And that's what led to a process where we could whittle things down and actually try our best to meet other meet students at the university face to face and work towards finding characters and joining them in the experience of the mood competition but i have to say that it was also the the just the cooperation of many universities across the african continent who also wanted to showcase the resourcefulness of their students and said let's also be very open and see how we can work with you so from there started this process of whittling down characters who would come to the competition in Botswana that we profiled during the week before and after the competition. How long did it take to take all these characters into, a, um, yeah, into, a, into your protagonists when you say, okay, these are the eight, ten students that I will accompany through my film? Well, what, what the, the, was it? The, I would have personally, I like films and research periods that take a long time. So a big challenge here was that Time was ticking. Mm -hmm. So from the time students are chosen, it varies across universities. Some universities chose students a few months before the competition. Others chose students three weeks before the competition was to happen. So we worked with all these different, uh, you know, different contingencies. So for, we were lucky that, and another, another element in making a film about a competition, of course, is that there's so much unpredictability. Things were happening very quick. We don't know which teams were actually going to win and be in the finals of the competition. From the outset, we weren't sure whether the teams that we were choosing to follow um, were the ones that we could follow through to the end of the competition. We hoped that they would be some of them. And through research and luck, we, I think we managed to choose some that did uh, end up being in the finals. Um, but Uh, and, and we're very lucky with the team from Uganda, Makareri University. We filmed them from very early on in the competition. So basically, we started filming characters before the competition, some a couple of months, some a couple of weeks. But we also picked up new characters when we got to Botswana and met them for the first time. And of course, the characters that you see in the film aren't the only characters that we filmed with. Unfortunately, not everybody could make it into a film like this. Excellent. In Botswana was the final. That's what, where, where the, the showdown, if you can say, uh, takes place, the big trial then. And you have the teams um, from Uganda, from Kenya, from Egypt and South Africa. So representatives of all the continent. And it's also very interesting, the different characters. And if it would be a feature film, I mean, you cannot cast them better. They are so strong and they are so um, into the thing, of course, and they want to win it. And, and there are really also some tough scenes where they say, okay, I was only second and second is not first and I cannot go there. Um, 
did you have the personal relation to your characters? Was it that you were kind of a moderator sometimes to, to really, that they were not too upset? <laughs> Interesting, you know, I mean, I was very aware that with a film like this, I'm dealing with young law students and they're very much in a competitive space. Yeah. And for them, it's, it's very high stakes. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to win. This competition is very prestigious on, in the law world on the African continent. And I was also concerned that they had their whole lives ahead of them, their professional lives ahead of them. So how they react to this, uh, to the contest and to winning and losing, you know, is, is, is very important to deal with sensitively in the form. But what happened, because of my law background, I think it was easy for me to break the ice or easier mm -hmm. and to get to know some of the students because we could talk about law school, we could talk about life after law school, we could also talk about some court judgments. And through that, I started to get to know the students better and developed personal relationships with each one of them. And I think just to say that when we chose characters, we also apart from geographical diversity, choosing characters from different parts of the continents, apart from choosing characters that had specific relationships or could have specific interests in the moot issues under discussion, whether it be refugee backgrounds or gay backgrounds, mm -hmm. we also wanted to choose characters that were diverse in personality, in, in tone, in the way they deal with things. And there's so much diversity in people in general that these characters just came out to us and you see them in the competition reacting in different ways. And yes, I did develop relationships with people outside the competition. Mm -hmm. And we spoke a lot through emotions and how things come up, you know, in dealing with winning and losing. And I think it was a very rich experience for myself as well in terms of seeing these young people who are so emotionally mature at such a young age and also so brilliant. Because it's really interesting that you open up the rights of refugees, also, for example, um, for the LGBTQ uh, community. So first, perhaps th thoughts that you don't have, but you integrated it all in your film, not only the classical rights of refugees on the continent. So it's a very political film, of course, because uh, the refugee theme is all around the continent, not only swapping to Europe, but inside the continent. You have so much to deal with it. Um, and can can you say that a documentary film being political and can it help to change things um, for people who watch it? Well, that's a very big and interesting question. Um, well, first, I mean, I think what I wanted with this film was, was that it be a political documentary and a human story and a competition film. Um, and I'm hoping with a film like this, because it is, as you point out, the refugee issue is a is an important one all around the world as it is within our, in, on the continent. And on the continent, we are dealing with refugee issues for many years now, and we are dealing with it within our own countries and across the continent. And the numbers are huge. So I feel that a film like this, because it's not, I'm hoping, my hope is that because it's not directly or only about refugee issues, it can also potentially bring in a wider audience that's maybe interested in a competition form and a human story and get them to engage in refugee issues. So I'm hoping that the film does, even though it's a fun film, it also deals with a serious theme. And I hope mm -hmm. that it gives a space for people to contemplate refugee issues, refugee laws, how to make people, um, how to make, you know, how to deal with the law compassionately but also just to see young people who might not also directly be uh, you know, affected by refugee issues in their own personal lives, but who very much care and know how precarious life could be. And I'm hoping that that could be a hook to pull in a wider audience, to have some sort of a, of a bigger impact in whatever small way it might be. We show your film African Mood here on the festival in Munich um, as a Europe premiere. So you had already the world premiere. Could all the protagonists um, come to the premiere? How was the feeling there? And we, yeah, we had our world premiere about two weeks ago in hot, at hot dogs at the hot dogs film festival in Toronto. And unfortunately, we were not able to bring all the characters there, but they are were all very excited that the, that I finally made the film. <laughs> I think as a, they're 19 to 23 and they had no idea that editing a film and getting it to the final hurdle takes so long. They were actually expecting me to finish it in about two to three months. So they were very excited when I actually got to uh, go to Toronto and show the film. But what I must say is that uh, later in the year, 
the Mooch competition for this year mm -hmm. uh, will be held in Cairo in Egypt. Oh, yeah. And the organizers are planning to fly all the characters to the competition in Egypt. And we will show the film there Great. in the company of the characters to all the next generation of human rights lawyers, law students on the continent. Excellent. Even if in your film, a team from Egypt is also uh, taking part. And that shows also the variety and the range of this African continent. I mean, it definitely goes from Egypt and in, in North Africa to the South Africa. And for us, it's it helps a lot to understand uh, a little bit more of the continent. Even I learned that in South Africa, um, Pretoria is the capital, but the legislative capital is Kapstadt, is Cape Town. So you have it uh, separated, not in only one capital. Yeah, they used to be a, a, a three capitals, the, the judicial capital and, and uh, parliament buildings are in Cape Town and everybody wants parliament to stay in Cape Town and the government minister. So it was, a, it was done as a compromise to have three different centers and mm -hmm. we still have the legacy of it. And as you say, the African continent is diverse in policies, in countries' responses to refugee issues. But the moot... Uh, film like this also tries to look at the question of what unites us and what divides us. Um, okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so th that's one of the themes in the film, which I think is a very interesting one for exploration as well. But you helped us definitely a lot to get a better understanding to be also, uh, even law students are going to be, I think, enthusiastic about maybe taking a part also in a mood. Uh, if they watch the film here, you give us an overview over the African continent and we show this here, uh, especially also to understand more. And we want to send out greets to Daniela, Jerome, Rachel, Aska, Edward. Tafik, Karim, Anushka, Yusuf, and Franz, your, your protagonists. Um, how strong is the contact still with them? I'm still in touch with all of them, and I feel like I struck gold for them uh, with them because they are amazing and fascinating and warm, and everybody's so different. And I really appreciate their trust that they put in us for making the film. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's in, in, in many ways, it's a small form. It's not about a big issue. It's not about a big topic. It's just about young people, you know, in an intellectual exercise. And I'm really happy that all of you out there have taken the time to watch it. And I hope that you liked it. And yeah, I hope, you know, I hope that you get something out of it. And thank you so much also for raising all the issues and, and that you have raised in the form. It's really good to hear and to speak about the form. Very, very nice. And it's really uh, nicely placed also in our festival here. It fits perfectly um, in the festival. Is there a TV um, screening planned um, after the festival uh, season? Yes, the, the film will show at, at, fest, at, at uh, further festivals and they, it, it, ha it will also show on, on several television stations. Mm -hmm. um, there, is, there is a plan for it to show at several television stations. And what can we time. expect next from you, Shamila? <laughs> I'm plotting another law theme documentary, but mm -hmm. this time I'm going to, it's going to be a slower develop, one that's slow in development and that I take a longer time, not a longer time over, but it's about a longer, yeah, a longer process and not something sort of snappy that happens with, with a week, in a week that comes with so many challenges, <laughs> but also a lot of joy and excitement. Thank you very much for African Mood, for your film and bringing together these two worlds, the world of law and the world of documentary film. It's a perfect combination and a very strong and intense film uh, with a lot of humor, as you said, but also suspension. So it's definitely worth to watch it. Stay with us for a second because um, I just announced in German um, that this film is also nominated for the Kino Kino Publikumspreis, der auch in diesem Jahr wieder von BR und Dreisat gestiftet wird online abstimmen ganz einfach auf unserer Webseite docfestmünchen.de. Jamila, see that very thank you for the talk. Well, thank you and can I also say thank you to our uh, producers, our fellow producers apart from our company under the current form, their steps in South Africa and two three forms in um, Finland. Thank you for your generous support in, the, in making the form possible. Excellent. Yes, yeah, South African Finland combination. Very interesting. Thanks a lot. Best greets to South Africa and good luck for the next festivals and for your film and also for the future.